My name is Nickel, oh Nickel. There was a really interesting conversation over on the Blizzard forums that brought up the question of which of the Overwatch characters actually know Reaper's identity? Because if any of you guys have thought about this, it's kind of confusing. Do characters that are unrelated to Reaper, as far as we know, know that Reaper is Gabriel? The natural assumption might be no, because when Anna saw Gabriel without the mask in the Overwatch comic Old Soldiers, she looked very surprised. It was definitely the first time she realized who it was, but was that because she had been playing dead this whole time and everyone else knows but she doesn't know and the only reason she was surprised was because she was so far out of the loop? Or was she really the first person to know that at all? So the question still stands, which other Overwatch characters know that Reaper is Gabriel? What makes it even a bit more ambiguous is the fact that some of the in-game voice lines make it seem like they do know that Reaper is Gabriel, but in some ways that kind of contradicts what we've seen in the comics. So which one is right? Or if both of them are right, if everything is correct, then is it an issue of timeline? Is that specific comic set way before the timeline of the game, unlike what we thought before, or is it something else? Michael Chu, Overwatch's lead writer, actually explained all of this, but first, this is how the whole conversation was kicked off. When the question was brought up of who knows Reaper is Gabriel, the original poster followed up with, obviously Anna knows, and since Anna knows, Soldier knows. I think I'm gonna safely assume Widowmaker knows too. And that's obviously because Reaper works with Widowmaker. And then he goes on to say, we didn't even have to hear Sombra's in-game quote to know she already knew who he was. What's the plan today, Gabe? You don't mind if I call you Gabe, do you? I'm gonna assume Winston and Tracer, however, have no idea. And obvious characters like Mei, Orisa, Zarya, Symmetra, and Lucio, who are not connected to Reaper in any way, of course have no idea. As to Roadhog and Junkrat, even if they did know, which they probably don't, I doubt they'd care. Farah, maybe. If she had any contact with her mother, maybe she knows. Bastion, I seriously doubt it. Torb and Ryan, I don't think they know either. Hanzo, Genji, and Zen, probably have no clue. McCree, maybe. I doubt anyone will tell him, but I think he might, if he hasn't already, recognize his old teacher under the mask. And since Mercy was the one to revive Reaper, I think it's safe to say she knows. And there's also Mercy's in-game quote. What happened to you? You tell me, Doc. So when Michael Chu hopped in the conversation, he cleared this up by saying, So far, Anna and Jack, when they encountered him in Old Soldiers, and Sombra, because... She knows things. Even with everything that's happened to Reyes, Anna and Jack would be able to recognize him immediately, given all of their close experience serving together over the years. To make it extra confusing, it gets a little more complicated in-game because we chose to have some non-canon interactions. Because I think it's more interesting to have Reinhardt take out Reaper and say, traitor, than to accurately reflect that he doesn't know Reaper's true identity. But as I've said before, events in-game shouldn't be considered strictly canon. So that makes it pretty clear. Anna, Jack, and Sombra know who Reaper is, according to Michael Chu, and he also confirmed that some of the voice interactions in-game are non-canon, because they're just more interesting to have non-canon voice interactions in there. So it seems like there are very few people that know that Reaper is Gabriel, but it's not clear if those are the only people that know, or the only ones that he's willing to confirm, because the fact that Widowmaker and Mercy are not on that list is kind of strange, considering Widowmaker works with him, and the history that Mercy and Reaper have together. I just thought this was an interesting conversation to bring up because I've seen this discussed a few times, and now we actually have an actual answer from Overwatch's lead writer himself. This next story is about Orisa, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen by now, but Orisa is available and competitive on the live servers. And this happened not long after the Battle.net client changed its name to the Blizzard client. So in the upper left corner, it actually says Blizzard now instead of the Battle.net logo. And that was something they announced they were going to do a long time ago, but it's finally here. But going back to Orisa, for those of you that were keeping track of Orisa's release progression, it was a different process than any of the other heroes that have been released so far. First, we got information from Efi, the news report, then Orisa was announced put in the PTR, came to the live servers, but wasn't available for competitive play. But now, Orisa is finally available on everything, including competitive, console and all. Usually when a character goes from the PTR servers to the live servers, that's about it. It's just done. But from everything we've seen the Overwatch development team say about what they've learned in the past, the way they did things with Orisa seems like they wanted to act on all of that. When Anna first came out, a lot of people were saying that she was initially severely underpowered. So they buffed her to the point where she's been a must-pick at high-level games for the last six months or so. And their solution to that, to her being so powerful, was to chip away at her little by little with smaller nerfs until this most recent 
nerf, which was pretty significant. And one of the reasons why at higher level play, she was considered a must pick was because in some cases, she was even out healing dedicated healers like Mercy, but she could still do damage with her weapon, which is a lot more useful than Mercy's weapon. And so much of that came from the power of her grenade. But the specifics of that don't matter right now. What's important is that Blizzard noticed the trend that Anna was underpowered, they made her super powered, and then they tried to get her back down to normal little by little. So when Sombra rolled around, the team did the exact opposite to prevent having an Anna situation repeat itself. So when the same thing happened again, tons of people were complaining that Sombra was too underpowered. They didn't mega buff her like they did with Anna. They kind of just left her and sometimes made incremental changes over time, like the fraction of a second less of the time it takes to hack something. Because after the whole Anna thing, it seemed like part of their philosophy was that it just takes players a while to figure out the groove of certain characters. And while they're in that state of trying to figure out the groove of a character, people feel like the character is just underpowered. So if they buff the hero before giving players a time to find that groove, then theoretically they might accidentally skip over that sweet spot of where the character would be most balanced. It seems like where things went wrong with the Sombra method was that because she was injected into competitive, at the same time she was in quick play in the live servers, very few people wanted to take the risk of playing her to figure out all the creative ways to keep playing her at higher levels. So instead of people doing that, she kind of just became neglected for the most part and was notoriously known as one of the most underpicked characters in the game. Obviously, some of the recent updates are a much more significant change, but it was that way for a long while. So besides the practical development testing reasons for releasing Orisa the way they did, one of the major motives might have been to avoid both extremes, the Anna and the Sombra release methods, and instead just try rolling it out very slowly. The PTR was for everyone to test test, as in this is what the character is. And then on the live servers, but not competitive, people could try her out, but in a no stakes kind of way, where you actually had a week to play her on the live servers without any SR punishment for playing her in an experimental way that nobody else is really playing her. And then full live competitive mode. Even though the fact that she's an anchor tank alone might get her more competitive play than the previous two, it still makes sense the approach they took to all of this. So for those of you that have played Orisa and competitive, what have your experiences been? Do you think the way that Blizzard did this release as opposed to Anna and Sombra is going to put Orisa into the meta, or do you think she's going to be one of the most underpicked characters as well? Let me know what you guys have experienced down below in the comments. This last story is about a musically based Overwatch piece. Jay Kraken is a YouTuber who streams Overwatch over on YouTube Gaming, and he's one of my friends that I've been playing music together with for a little while. So this piece that I'm about to show you guys is something that I've actually seen him working on over time while we're working on our own projects. And it came out really great. It's something that I think a lot of you guys will like a lot. So I'll show you a clip from it, but if you want to see the whole thing, make sure to check out the full video which is linked down below in the description. One last thing before I go, if any of you guys want to submit stories for me to talk about in future videos, all you have to do is go to the Underwatch link down below in the description, and once you're there, you can see how to submit news. There's also a place where if you want to have your gameplay featured here on the channel, you can do that there as well. And that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you haven't checked out some of these other videos on the channel, you can click on them to check them out, whether you're on PC or on mobile. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Put his, put his, I'll be watching over you.